Pipebox, this is the Penta 4 project and as you can see the tank is finished and waiting for a crew and a vignette. I hope you like the result, it's really been fun to paint it and weather it and if you want to know how everything was done on the final reveal slideshow, just keep watching. Thanks guys and enjoy! We left it exactly here, I thought there was still room for improvement and development, so I didn't start painting it right away as I told you. After seeing work by Volker Benenberg in an article in the Tanker magazine, issue number 8, I would try to recreate a similar disposition of stowage elements and techniques. Since I didn't intend to create an original piece of art, I used his work as a further step in my learning process because I consider myself relatively new in the hobby. So the spare wheel holder was scratch built with PE and a nut and bolt were used from spare box. I went on replicating an extra shelf using more P stripes and super glue. There you have it. I didn't have much trouble with it. I used the rule, but when things didn't fit, I basically trusted my eye. I also wanted to build a real support using more elements from my spare box and my empty P sprues. As you can see, I vandalized nuts and bolts from odd spare pieces. There you have it. After all these scratchable details, the tank started to have a life of its own. To achieve a bit more of realism, fenders were damaged, but not too much. With this rack, I used a lead sheet from a wine bottle and folded it to get this effect. I guess you should never go too far away from Isaac Newton to make it look realistic unless you want to recreate moon mission. I also wanted a bucket on the rear of the tank, my first bucket in the hobby, so I had to add some hooks on the back and spare box again. There you have a close uh, up look of the left hook plus a holder that I added on both sides, since I wanted to hold the stowage with a string or a chain. Right. The build was now completed, so I started priming the tank with red primer. Interiors were prepared for chipping with the stretches effect fluid. And a base color was applied using a mix of these three tones. The chipping fluid was activated with water and an old stiff brush. Finally, interiors were washed with a brownish enamel mix. The whole bulk was ready for the same process, stretches effect lacquer, and then it was airbrushed with different tones, darker in lower areas and lighter in top surfaces. Scratch time again with water, and then I started enhancing panels and protruding elements with grey and blue related tones. Iron elements were base coated with all rust and reddish variations. Here you can see some mapping details replicating rust. The exhaust was texturized using some putty, red acrylic and an old brush. And rusty details were added and fixed. Scratch fluid went one more time. I coated the whole thing with great tones and then I scratched the exhaust with water and a stiff brush. After painting all those tires with anthracite acrylics, I prepared the surface with satin varnish to work with decals. There you have it, they were softened with decal medium. The tank was not completely filtered, I didn't go wild with it. Then it was enriched with a bluish paint wash. And finally it was complemented with a darker paint wash. Due to all that filtering and wash work, some of the previous light works had lost their freshness, so here I enhanced details, but this time using oils. I painted wood elements. 
I always like to work with this Vallejo set, which includes very useful tips. Stretches effects were enhanced again using acrylics. I always enjoy the rusty streak part, though I never go wild with it. There you have further work with that exhaust. I used a wide variety of products here. This is how it looks. I wanted it a bit texturized and that's the result of the previous body work. I found this stowage on Amazon so I ordered it and in less than two weeks it came all the way from China. You may notice some nasty air bubbles here. I had to use some putty to cover those defects along with the base of the wooden crate. There are some of the additional elements I expected to use. I wanted some kitchen pottery to give it some kind of mm, domestic touch. I got this set too. I found that this oil can could give some variation. I would cover it with a piece of clothes and a spit. I left the cargo aside, uh, open still to further changes, and I gave those tools some iron pigments. Tracks were enriched with enamels and pigments. Um, bucket handles in this kit are a bit crappy, so I stretch build one using thin wire. This one comes from a soft bread wrapping. Okay, so I primed all this cargo and additional stuff and went on with my stretching routine. I dry brushed these elements with lighter tones of grey oils and stretched it uh, a bit more with acrylics. This is an oil can which is a slightly bigger and taller. I had to stretch build it using a blue stuff mold, epoxy components, white clay and a piece of wire. I painted bottles with a mix of red and black and once it was dry I added a layer of periscope green transparent acrylic. That's how it look with all the stuff on board and I decided to add dust and mud weathering effects at this point. I found accidentally that uh, with airbrush thinner I had more control with pigments than using white spirit or water. On the other surfaces I just used pigments and brush. I added some spilled fuel effects too. Here I used the base of enamel dust effects and white spirits, followed by a mix of earth texture plus putty and a bit of real soil. I let it dry for a day. Then I added dark mud effects and let it dry. And the step was followed by fresh mud and a dark pin wash in some strategic areas. More fuel leaks were added here. And some dry mud splashes were painted randomly. Trucks received iron pigments and graphite, and we are done. 